What is the main motivation behind the proposed concept of concept depth in this paper? The main motivation behind the proposed concept of concept depth in this paper is to measure where different size large language models, LLMs, understand knowledge at various depths within their network. The paper aims to investigate how LLMs encode concepts of different complexities at different depths and to understand the relationship between the depth of the model and its conceptual understanding. By introducing the notion of concept depth, the paper seeks to provide a new perspective on how LLMs learn and process information, particularly focusing on how basic concepts are learned at lower levels of depth, while more complex concepts require deeper levels of understanding. The concept of concept depth is introduced to analyze and quantify the depth at which LLMs grasp different types of knowledge, shedding light on the internal mechanisms of these models and their ability to comprehend concepts at varying levels of complexity. How does the paper define concept depth and what does it aim to measure? The paper defines concept depth as a measure of where different large language models, LLMs, understand knowledge at various levels within their network depths. It aims to measure the depth at which different models on different types of datasets comprehend concepts. The concept depth indicates where basic concepts are typically learned at lower levels of the network, while more complex concepts require deeper layers. This notion of concept depth is introduced to understand how LLMs encode concepts of varying complexities within their network depths. The paper conducts extensive experiments using probe techniques to empirically summarize the concept depth of mainstream large language models on different datasets. The core contribution of the work includes introducing the concept of concept depth, deconstructing LLM's capabilities by analogy with human capabilities, and providing a new perspective on ILM's robustness from the concept depth perspective. Can you explain the core contributions of the paper in relation to the concept of concept depth? The core contributions of the paper in relation to the concept of concept depth include the introduction of the novel notion of concept depth to measure where different size large language models, LLMs, understand concepts, the deconstruction of LLM capabilities by analogy with complex human capabilities, and providing a new perspective on ILM's robustness from the concept depth perspective. The paper conducts extensive experiments on various mainstream LLMs using probe techniques to measure where different models understand knowledge on different types of datasets. The experiments reveal that basic concepts are typically learned at a low level of concept depth, while more complex concepts require deeper levels. This consistent phenomenon is observed across different LLM families and sizes. Additionally, the paper explores how interfering factors like quantization and random noise affect the concept depth of LLMs, showing that deeper models tend to have more concept depth to counteract interference. The paper also delves into the robustness of ILM's internal representations with respect to concepts, shedding light on how LLMs encode and understand concepts at different depths within their networks. What are the different families of open source models used in the experiments, and how are they categorized based on size? The different families of open source models used in the experiments are Gemma, Llama, and Quen. These models are categorized based on their size, with Gemma having models of 2B and 7B, Llama having models of 7B and 13B, and Quen having models of 0, 5B1, 8B, 4B, 7B, and 14B. Each family consists of models with varying numbers of parameters, with Gemma ranging from 2B to 7B, Llama ranging from 7B to 13B, and Quen ranging from 0, 5B to 14B. These models were utilized to support the analysis in the paper, with each family representing a different scale of model size for experimentation and comparison in understanding the concept depth of large language models. How are the datasets categorized in terms of complexity for the experiments conducted in the paper? The datasets in the paper are categorized into easy and complex datasets based on the performance of the large language models, LLMs, on each dataset. 
Easy datasets are those where linear probes can achieve high classification accuracy at the initial or middle depth of the LLMs. On the other hand, complex datasets are characterized by large fluctuations and stable classification accuracy occurring at the deep depth of the LLMs. The categorization is determined by how well the LLMs perform on the datasets with linear probes at different depths, with easy datasets showing high accuracy early on and complex datasets requiring deeper layers for stable classification accuracy. What is the significance of adding noise to the input questions in the experiments? The significance of adding noise to the input questions in the experiments is to observe how the performance of the large language models, LLMs, changes when faced with interference. By introducing random noise at the beginning of each problem, the experiments aim to evaluate the robustness of ILM's internal representations and their ability to maintain concept depth, despite external disruptions. The experiments show that the presence of noise in the input data can negatively impact the ILM's learning process, slowing down their ability to converge to an optimal solution. This indicates that noise perturbation can affect the model's performance and learning curve, shifting the convergence speed. Additionally, the experiments demonstrate that reducing the precision of the LLMs to 8 bits further slows down the convergence rate, suggesting that compressing LLMs to 16 bits could be a good practice to optimize model design. Overall, adding noise helps assess the resilience of LLMs to external disturbances and provides insights into how robust their internal representations are in the face of interference, ultimately influencing the model's learning dynamics and adaptability to different data types. How does the paper utilize linear classifier probing to quantify the probing differences in the hidden feature set of LLMs? The paper utilizes linear classifier probing to quantify the probing differences in the hidden feature set of LLMs by employing a binary logistic regression classifier with L2 regularization. The hidden feature set in LLMs is denoted as X in R caret N times D underscore model, where N represents the number of samples, and X caret I in R caret 1 times D underscore model represents the representation at a certain layer. The binary label Y caret I is set as 0 or 1. The objective function of the binary logistic regression classifier probes with L2 regularization is defined as theta is the parameter in this logistic regression model. Lambda is the regularization parameter. This linear model predicts LLM's response to the test set and compares it with the true label, providing a quantification of how well LLMs understand the current depth. This approach allows for a systematic evaluation of the performance of LLMs at different layers, enabling a detailed analysis of how representations from different layers contribute to the final prediction. By quantifying the probing differences using linear classifier probing, the paper gains insights into the understanding of concepts at various levels encoded within LLMs and assesses the robustness of ILM's internal representations with respect to concept depth. What are the metrics introduced in the paper to capture variations in accuracy across different layers of LLMs? The metrics introduced in the paper to capture variations in accuracy across different layers of LLMs are the variation rate, the jump point, and the converging point. The variation rate is defined as the ratio of accuracy at the ITH layer to the accuracy at the previous layer, denoted as beta, underscore I. The jump point is defined as the point where the accuracy significantly boosts by at least 10% compared to the previous layer. On the other hand, the converging point is defined as the point where the accuracy plateaus or begins to decline, indicating the model's learning saturation or peak learning capacity from the dataset. These metrics provide deeper insights into the learning dynamics of the model and its adaptability to different types of data, helping to understand how well LLMs comprehend concepts across their layers and datasets. Can you explain the research questions addressed in the experimental analysis section of the paper? 
The research questions addressed in the experimental analysis section of the paper are as follows. 1. RQ1. Do different ILMS concept depths behave consistently in the same dataset? 2. RQ2. Do different size LLMs but the same series E. G. Gemma series have consistent concept depth? 3. RQ3. Do ILMS concept depth of the same size behave consistently? These research questions aim to investigate the behavior of different large language models, LLMs, in terms of their understanding of concepts at various depths. The first question focuses on the consistency of concept depths among different LLMs when applied to the same dataset. The second question delves into whether LLMs of different sizes within the same series exhibit consistent concept depth. Lastly, the third question explores the consistency of concept depth among LLMs of the same size. By addressing these research questions through experimental analysis, the paper aims to provide insights into how LLMs encode and understand concepts at different depths, shedding light on the internal mechanisms of these models and their performance on various datasets. How does the paper suggest leveraging probes for targeted model pruning to accelerate inference in large language models? The paper suggests leveraging probes for targeted model pruning to accelerate inference in large language models by deploying probes throughout a neural network to identify the layer at which a concept is learned. Once this critical layer is identified, Targeted model pruning can be applied by removing unnecessary or less influential layers from the network while preserving overall performance. By cutting off the layers that follow the identified layer, computational overhead is reduced and the model's complexity is decreased, resulting in faster inference times. This targeted pruning process is based on the insights gathered from probes, which act as detectors to pinpoint where specific concepts or features are learned within the network. The knowledge obtained from probes helps in understanding how information flows through the network and which layers contribute significantly to the model's final predictions. Ultimately, by strategically pruning the model based on probe insights, inference in large language models can be accelerated without compromising performance.